When you build a desktop device that looks like a tower in Dubai or maybe a stolen pillar from Stonehenge, you better back it up with some serious performance. I can honestly say I was a bit taken back by the appearance of this one at first. It's a literal all-in-one unit, amp, DAC, and even a headphone stand. No screens here, which can be a nice change of pace as long as they have a good button layout, something well thought out. The looks may have you curious on this one, but that's really just the sideshow here. The main act is the 5.12 watts per channel, as well as the Himalaya Pro R2R DAC chips that are installed with this one. They really wanna make sure that you know that it's inside it too. Beyond the obvious, a few quick notables, it's a fully balanced dual mono architecture. Uh, we have switchable oversampling available here on the front. High resolution Bluetooth, if you're into that sort of thing, LDAC, Aptex HD, Aptex X, ACC, SBC. And I just wanna give a quick shout out to APOS for sending this one out. I'll have a link for them below in the description. As always, all thoughts and opinions are my own. Before we talk about what's inside, let's take a tour. The front is pretty simple. This dial front and center for volume control and straight away, it doesn't really match up to the rest of this unit as far as quality goes. It just has a little bit too much play, honestly. I would have stuck with a nice round heavy dial here and for whatever reason, just knowing that this rectangle is gonna be off center all the time has my OCD triggered a little bit. Let me pull you aside for a quick product sponsorship from Cool Gadget. They sell a wide variety of innovative products, including what we have in for today, the X-Cool 4-in-1 100 watt USB-C charging cable. If your house is like mine, you probably have a wide variety of products to charge, and of course, several different connection types. The great thing about this cable is the ability to switch between this lightning cable and the USB-C on the one end, as well as the flexibility at the charging end to change from USB-A and USB-C. We're in that weird area right now where we have a mix of products using so many different charging standards, so something like this fits perfectly in a busy household. I would say my other favorite use case would be for the person who travels. Instead of carrying around a mess of cables, just carry this one. When you're on a plane or in a hotel, we see a wide variety of cable connections, Many are switching to USB-C, but by no means is everything to that point yet. This cable also rolls up nicely and travels compact by design. The flat build and fabric covering doesn't tangle, and it even includes a Velcro strap to bring it all together. So let's take a quick look at the durability. No one wants to buy something that's gonna fall apart in a month. Let's hang this 25 pound plate from the cable connector and see what happens. Well, it still works. If we take a closer look at the cable, you can see how this actually functions. It's simply an adapter on both ends of the cable. It's nice and secure when attached, but easily just slides off and remains connected when not in use. And that's great because let's face it, if it wasn't connected, you're likely gonna lose that adapter. Looking at the connection closely, you might notice these ends are slightly longer, two millimeters to be exact, than your average USB connector. And that was intentional here. The purpose here is to offer more flexibility for some of the really bulky cases made today. This extra length should get around ever having to remove the device from its case to charge. Giving a quick rundown on these, it's fast charging capable, up to 100 watts over USB-C. It appears to be really well made, Took a risk and hung a weight plate from it and it's still working just fine. It's a simple travel companion that gives you the flexibility without having to pack that extra mess of cables. I've linked it below in my description for Amazon as well as direct from Cool Gadget. There's a couple of bonus codes for discounts as well. Now let's get back to the video. On top of the volume knob, we have the selectors and indicators for both the high and low gain as well as the oversampling options. And then all the input selectors mirrored across to the right. The rear has plenty of connection options, a good mix of digital and analog, USB-C, USB-B, coax, and Bluetooth for digital. On the analog side, we get RCA and XLR. You could easily use this as an amp DAC, DAC preamp, or simply use this as simply a headphone amplifier. If you're shopping a product like this though, I would assume you're looking to take advantage of as much as possible to justify the cost. I would not suggest picking this up for $7.99, then only using it as an amplifier. There are better ways to spend your money. If you're shopping this, consider your usability here. If you're gonna be using this as your workhorse, DAC, amp, maybe preamp, and of course headphone stand, that comes for something right, then I can see this working for their intended crowd. It's a good blend of power, features, and sound quality that can really drive anything you throw at it without concern. The design is a bit wild, but if anything, I think it makes it stand out in a world filled with similar looking devices. Before we get into the sound review, let's take a look at the general usability on this one. What's it gonna be like to live with this on a daily basis? First, the power switch is on the rear of the unit, which isn't my favorite location by any means, but on the same topic, 
No external power brick on this, so that's a plus. The entire package appears sort of large and awkward, but it actually does a pretty good job of utilizing the space in your desk if you have a decent sized desk. The only issue is that it's really tall, so unless you have a decent room around your monitors, it may have to sit behind them, which would be kind of awkward to operate. If this is built around laying on its side, it would definitely take up more real estate on your desk, but it would allow you to easily put it underneath your monitors. Next consideration would be the button layout, switching between the gain and the oversampling modes. It's a simple toggle between the options with the top left button, as long as it's in a location with easy access. Same goes for the input switching. Usability could have definitely been improved here with a simple addition of a remote, but we won't get one today. The four pin XLR and the 6.5 millimeter output are located at the bottom, which I do like. It's simple to access, even if you had this in a hard to reach place like behind your screens. It's also located where the majority of the weight is, so it allows you to easily press in cables without it sliding all over the place. The weight is actually coming from the bottom power supply, which is located at the bottom of this unit. It houses a really massive 100 watt OFC toroidal transformer. It's surprisingly large for this one's needs, but nonetheless appreciated. We already covered the volume dial here. It is what it is. It's a bit of a miss to include something like that on a device priced like this, but yes, it controls the volume. On the topic of volume though, if you're an IEM user, it is IEM safe as far as noise, but if you have this unit at the minimum volume, expect a small channel imbalance. It quickly resolves itself with a little bit of bump in volume, but if you often listen at very quiet levels, it's something to keep in mind. I don't have any issues with the rear of this unit as far as usability goes. It has almost everything I would look for. If I added anything here, it would probably just be an optical input, but for the most part, it's really well equipped. My gripe with the rear isn't the connections at all, it's how they are being handled, the output specifically. The lineouts are not volume controlled and they won't mute when you plug in a headphone. The ideal arrangement here would have been selectable volume controlled output. Have the option to either run your headphones or the line out, or even in the simplest form, mute the line out when a headphone is plugged in. This to me would have been a simple layup. For my Bluetooth people, this is equipped with a Qualcomm 5125. It supports LDAC, Aptex HD, Aptex X low latency. And when you have the antenna installed, it had really impressive range. I had no issues there really stretching the distance on that one. My final point on usability would just be operating this as a headphone stand. It works just fine. It has a concave design and they rest really well on it. They do get a little bit warm, but it's nothing bothersome for myself. Getting into the sound review, this utilizes an R2R DAC versus what many use today, Delta Sigma. In theory, R2R DACs are a little more analog sounding and less detailed than their Delta Sigma counterparts. I've experienced it, but it's also not an absolute by any means. It's also a bit silly to try to rationalize one being better than the other by the design. There are so many variables in the design and implementation that it's really not that simple. Nonetheless, in this use case and sound review, I primarily found myself using the low and high non oversampling as I felt it had the most natural musical character. It didn't quite have the detail and edge of the oversampling mode, but I also never felt like I needed it. The sound is really good here, if I'm being honest. I was getting after some of the quirks in the design earlier, but I did actually enjoy the performance. It's smooth, mellow, and flat out realistic, but it's also not overly warm like you might expect. If you're a person that has sampled a number of the new amps over the last couple years, and they're a bit too sharp sounding, this might be exactly what you're looking for as far as the most natural sound without any glare. If I was gonna peg any type of coloration here, it might be in the lower mid range, a little extra that provides a little more weight to the recordings depending on the vocalist. What this amp certainly has is power coming in at 5.12 watts per channel into a 32 ohm load from the XLR, and the more modest, but still plenty of power, 1.8 watts per channel from the 6.35. But what struck me wasn't really the effortless power output. If anything, it's becoming an assumption. So many of the amps today have exceptional power. What struck me the most was the tonal balance, bass, mid-range, and treble, a very natural sound that didn't impede on each other in any way. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is not a detail hunter. It's just, for the most part, simply passing on whatever it's given, influenced in some general ways by the DAC it's equipped with. So if that's something that rings a bell for you, this might be the right fit. I don't think at any point you're gonna think this sounds unimpressive with this level of detail. If anything, it makes up for it with its really deep soundstage, 
And an oversimplification that's really important is that you might just find more comfort for longer listening sessions. If you're the type that listens to a neutral sound and thinks it's dull, you might be better off searching out some of the more detail-driven Delta Sigma designs out there. And that's fine too. What sounds great to you may sound like nails on the chalkboard to the next guy or gal. When I think about this one and how it sounds, I think about the pure music lover, not necessarily the equipment first, music is the byproduct type. The sound you get feels alive, has depth and realism, but it won't rock the boat. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of people just want to go for a ride. They don't need a visceral experience every time they tune in. Wrapping this one up, the general construction is pretty good. The volume control is my really kind of my only complaint in the exterior packaging on this one. The price at $7.99 is up there. Maybe a bit of a stretch without the preamp functions, but when you consider the price of an R2R DAC, it starts to even out. If you want to reach the same level or configuration, it's going to cost you more to go separates in almost all cases. The actual performance here was really good. The included DAC had a really smooth, pleasant sound. The headphone amplifier section had the ability to drive almost any load. And if you need a headphone warmer, they have you covered as well. So as far as reasons you might pass this one up, you prefer the technical sound. This just won't be that piece. It's not intended to be a highly resolving sound here. And its actual footprint on your desk just might not work. It doesn't take up a lot of desk space, but at the same time, it's really tall. So you need the right configuration. It's an interesting product and I can recommend it as long as none of the notables today were deal breakers to you. I think it could do a bit more or maybe more appropriately be equipped with a bit more, but it also fills the needs for a lot of people. An all-in-one desktop solution, utilizing a really competent R2R DAC, and power to open you up to whatever pairings you might come up with. If you liked today's video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. I have all kinds of videos coming, some premium gear, budget gear, DIY, vintage, other tech. Let's grow this channel and community together. Take care, we'll talk soon. See ya.